When William Branham reinvented his stage persona to include the 1937 flood as the focal point for his awakening to the Pentecostal movement, there are many fictional elements that he created. He claimed that he was uninvolved and unfamiliar with Pentecostals until God shook him by smiting his wife and daughter during the flood. Though he owned and operated a Pentecostal church in Jeffersonville and had been holding Pentecostal revivals with his mentor, Roy E. Davis, and the Klan's supreme religious chaplain, Caleb A. Ridley, Branham claimed that he had listened to his mother-in-law and prevented his wife, Hope, from becoming Pentecostal. Though she was already a leader in Roy E. Davis' Pentecostal sect and later a member of the Billy Branham Pentecostal Tabernacle. There were some elements of the stage persona's history that were not created by William Branham and were fully unrelated to his history. An example of this is the story of the floating pulpit. William Branham claimed that the pulpit in his church was lifted up to the ceiling by floodwaters during the 1937 flood and returned to the floor with the Bible still open where he preached his last sermon prior to the flood. This, believe it or not, was a true story, but it did not happen at William Branham's Pentecostal church. The pews and the pulpit of the First Presbyterian Church in Jeffersonville were spared from flood damage during the 1937 flood when the floor rose up to ride the crest of the flood. Jeffersonville newspapers said that it was a good story for Ripley's Believe It or Not. You can learn this and more on william-branham.org.